Video 4.6 Azure VNets and Subnets In this video, we will cover the following topics. What are Azure VNets? What are Azure Subnets? How to create a VNet? Azure VNets and Subnets are the networking services provided by Azure. Before going any further, let us first understand the term networking. A couple of decades ago, when different computers wanted to communicate with each other, they were physically connected using a router and switches. Later on, people started using servers virtually, which are hosted in the cloud. Though they are virtualized, the instances inside the servers do not have any way to communicate. Earlier, even for these virtual servers, physical routers and switches were used to establish communication between the virtual servers. These physical routers and switches were located on premises of the company. The virtual servers were located in the data centers of cloud service providers like Azure. For servers in Azure's data centers to communicate, the data should go until the company's on-premise data center's router and then back to the Azure data center. It is a hectic task. Cloud service providers like Azure had an idea. They thought it would be great if they could virtualize the networking equipment. So now, what are Azure Virtual Networks or VNets? We all know that many companies will use cloud services. All of them might be having sensitive data. Every company that uses the cloud does not want their data to be disposed of to other companies. At the same time, they require the virtual resources of the company to communicate among themselves. How to accomplish this though? To do this, you can launch your resources inside a virtual network. A virtual network is an isolated section of the Azure network within which you can launch your resources. This enables you to communicate securely with VMs and on-premises networks. A virtual network is similar to an on-premise data center. However, with the virtual networks, you can enjoy the benefits of using the network in the cloud without having the burden of having to manage the servers physically. This can be done by choosing a range of IP addresses from the CIDR range for your virtual network. Subnets are a logical partition of an IP network into multiple smaller segments. You are breaking up your IP range for VNet into smaller networks. A public subnet is the one that can access the internet and a private subnet is the one that is not connected to the internet. Let us look at an analogy to understand why we need IP networks or VNets and subnets. In the whole world, there are millions of children who need schooling. There are a plethora of schools for these children that are spread across the world. The schools are similar to VNets or IP networks. Schools are again divided into classrooms so that the teacher can control the children and can be managed easily. For the same reason, a virtual network is divided into subnets. Let us now walk through the creation of a virtual network and deploy two VMs in it and then configure them to allow one virtual machine to ping the other within that virtual network. Sign in to your Azure account and search for virtual networks. Click Add and in the Basics tab, create a new resource group. I'm naming it my-az900-vnet-demo-rg. Give a name to the virtual network. Leave the remaining as default and move to the IP addresses tab. Here, select the subnet. After this, click Review 
plus create. After the validation, click create. After the completion of the deployment of the VNet, let us move on to create a VM. Search for virtual machines and select add. In the basics tab, select the resource group which you have created earlier. Name this virtual machine as myvm1. The image as Windows Server's 2019 data center and the size as B1S. Enter the username as Azure user and the password as capital P, small a, small s, small s, small w, small o, small r, small d, 1, 2, 3, 4. Because it satisfies the password requirements. You can also create your own password. Select HTTP 80 in inbound ports. Next, go to the networking tab and see if the virtual network you created earlier, that is VNet1, is selected. Leave the remaining as default and move to the management tab. Here, change the boot diagnostics to off. Select review plus create. After the validation, click Create and there will be a notification saying the deployment is in progress. Wait for some time for the VM to be deployed successfully. We need to create one more VM. So go to Virtual Machines and do the same process which we did earlier. Change the name of the VM. and check that the virtual network is the one we had deployed earlier and if there is a new public IP address. Wait for a few minutes for the VM to deploy successfully. Now we will allow Internet Control Message Protocol or ICMP connections and test whether the virtual machines can communicate with each other. From the home page, go to Virtual Machines and select the first virtual machine. Click Connect and select RDP. Click Download RDP file. Open the downloaded file and click Connect. Enter the username and password. Click OK. A certification warning will pop up. Select Yes to create the connection. You will be connected to Windows Server Virtual Machine. Wait for a few minutes for the virtual machine to load. Server Manager will open and you can close it. Open PowerShell and enter ping space my vm2. You will receive an error saying request timed out. The ping fails because ping uses the Internet Control Message Protocol or ICMP. By default, ICMP isn't allowed through the Windows Firewall. Let us now allow the ICMP. For this, connect to your second virtual machine as mentioned before. Open the PowerShell and type new hyphen netfirewall rule space hyphen display name open quotation allow ICMP v4 hyphen in close quotation space hyphen protocol ICMP v4. This command allows ICMP inbound connections through the Windows firewall. Go to the RDP session of MyVM1 and try to communicate with MyVM2. You can see that communication is successful. 
Now you can disconnect from both the RTP sessions and go to the portal. In the portal, go to the resource groups and delete the resource group named my-az900-vnet-demo-rg. It deletes everything which we have created. Wait for some time for the deletion to complete. Congrats! You have successfully configured and deployed two virtual machines in a virtual network and changed the Windows Firewall configuration so that one of the VM can allow incoming ping requests. In summary, in this video, we have covered the following topics. What are Azure VNets? What are Azure Subnets? How to create a VNet? In the next video, we will take a look at Azure Database Services.